we willing to leverage everything? Imagine living in a gorgeous, more than half a million dollar home. A home that won the Parade of Homes Gold Award. A home highlighted in your local community magazine. A home featured on HGTV. Envision yourself walking out this massive, oversized front door and down the stone path to the street where every other home is as magnificent as yours. See yourself walking your child to school as your neighbors drive by in luxury automobiles. Wave and smile. Stop and let your children play on the rope swings and smell the roses. Everyone is starting their day but you are going in the opposite direction to an inner city school a half a mile away that feels a world away. Can you picture yourself living in this awesome, amazing home? You are living in luxury. You are living the American dream from the outside looking in. But truth be told, you're working as hard as you can to make ends meet. You don't know how you're going to pay your bills next month. You're relying on the charity of others, and you're wondering, why is this happening to me? This is my family story. We had climbed the proverbial career ladder until the ladder disappeared. A business partnership failed, and we were left heartbroken and financially devastated. But our worst moment would become our best. Why? We lost control. Something our pride believed was impossible. We were middle class America. We had our backup plan. Our 401k, the stuff, travel, we were self-sufficient. We didn't need anyone or anything. Or so we thought. We used the equity from our home and we started over. Great loss blooms great opportunity and Grace Klein Construction began. At the time, the market was booming, so we decided to renovate in a historic downtown neighborhood. Just as we finished, the economy crashed. And yeah, we were stuck with that house. Of course we were. There were no buyers, and we didn't have the money for our house, this house, and to keep our business running. We were drowning. Thankfully, we were able to rent our personal home, and we moved in to that house. What was happening to our world? We were an oxymoron. Were we a part of every socioeconomic class or none at all? All the lines became blurred. Our neighbors were wealthy, but our friends at school, 90% of them were on free lunch. The byproduct of this backwards and mixed up situation that was well, I hate to admit this, but maybe for the first time, we saw people for how, who they really were. It didn't matter what they looked like, where they lived, what clothes they wore, or their education level. And with this new perspective came a common reality. We were all in need of something. Our neighbors, they needed authentic friendship. Those kids at school needed food. And our friends across town needed joy and contentment. Everyone was in need of something. We knew a lot of people. And we all had something to give, too. From this new awareness of the needs around us, we started to think, what if this sharing idea is not just for kids? What if it's for adults, too? We started 
parts of the week that if everyone shared, there would be enough to go around. Remember, we can see these needs now, all your needs. And we were convinced that if we all shared, we would all have enough. From this idea of the Grace Climb Community was born. Grace Climb Community is a 501c3 nonprofit with this crazy belief that we can turn the world upside down if we share. It started with a donation room in what was once the conference room of our construction office. See, we didn't realize we could even leverage our business to share with others. And from this little room, people give what they don't need and they take what they do. Our friend jokes that the, the walls of geometry are defied by how much comes in and out of this office. And it is true. And from this little room, more ideas of giving and sharing group. We started to think about all our friends, and some of them were hungry, while others were throwing food away. The need and the excess collided, and a food ministry resulted that focused on relationships and not handouts. Through shared life, we started to realize that the most important thing is to build relationships. Because when we take away the power, the prestige, and the positions, we're all the same. You, me, everybody. And we have two core needs. To know we're loved and to know that we matter. Through meaningful relationships, both these core needs are met, and the communal sharing that we practice at Grace Klein helps us to realize and own the fact that we are all in need. When we realize this truth, we are more honest, more vulnerable, and therefore more open to authentic community. We keep a quote in our kitchen from Mother Teresa, and it says, I alone cannot change the world, but I can cast a stone across the waters and create many ripples. A jumping stone is such a perfect visual of the ripple effect of sharing. No one knows where a skipping stone will go or what it will impact along the way. When our family had one car, and we needed two, a family took a risk and loaned a car at no cost to us for two years, which compelled us to share a rental home with another family at no cost to them. If you and I skip a latte, and I know that's such an overused example, but I love coffee, so it's a little sacrifice. <laughs> And if we drink water in restaurants, then those few dollars for me and you can help shelter orphans in Zambia, can help educate vulnerable children in Belize in South Africa, and can help save impoverished children in Guatemala, besides the fact that it can help feed people in our own city. See, sharing just keeps going and going and going, and you can't quantify the results. Last week, a single mom was referred to us who was going to be evicted from her apartment. Nineteen people gave, and we were able to pay that vendor directly so that she and her daughter did not lose their home. Since then, two people within the community have hired her to clean their homes, and they came by our office and picked up a box of food that just so happened to have a watermelon, her daughter's favorite fruit. They've also signed up to give back to the community. When we share our homes, we share our lives. Are you willing to have someone over for dinner? Not at a restaurant, I'm talking about your place. See, people love to be pursued, to be wanted, to know that they matter, that they're thought about. So our family set a goal to have someone for dinner once a week. To listen, to talk, to eat, 
Because it doesn't matter if you live in a mansion or a shack, you can share a meal. Just imagine what we could sacrifice if we really, really went for it. And what we could share. Community, great, I'm sorry, Grace Klein Community has started a new networking project called Life Shared, where interconnected friends <coughs> share their homes with each other all around the world when travel is needed. These cost savings for not staying in hotels expands your giving budget. When we share, we can give too much. See, the more we share, the more we can stretch our financial resources and together we can care for and fund urgent need in our country and around the world. Remember, community is not one person. We need each other. We all contribute and we all receive. The picture behind me represents an idea much bigger than me, my family, or Grace Klein. Giving too much is not a, just a philosophy. It is a lifestyle of others first that is fun, adventure, and challenge. It's not drudgery and obligation. Can't you see? The people who give are the ones that receive immeasurably more. So, start sharing your stuff. Your time, your talents, your couch, your heart, wherever you are, everywhere you are. Leverage everything and imagine where the ripples will go.